If you use make.com or you've spent more than five minutes on the internet lately, you've heard about AI agents. Make.com now has its own version, aiming to compete with the best. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how make.com's AI agents work, how to set them up, when to use them, and when they will break if you don't configure them correctly, all in under 10 minutes. Hey there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com and we help businesses use platforms like Make to automate their tedious work and save time. Now, Make.com, the platform we're going to be using today is built for automating workflows across your tech stack, no code required. And now with AI agents, you're no longer setting up the triggers, the actions, the logic of your automated workflows. You're giving it the power to think choose, reason, and respond based on context. Let's not waste any time and dive straight into how we can use make.com's AI agents. Now we're in the make.com dashboard. You'll notice AI agents on the side panel here, currently in beta. So we'll select that. And you'll also see there are some really helpful resources on how you can get started with AI agents down below. Now we're gonna to select to create an agent which will open up a new modal, asking us to create a connection. You'll just want to add and save a connection if you don't currently have one. Doesn't really matter what that connection name is. Select for yourself. Now the agent name, you'll want to name this depending on the workflow that this specific agent is going to help you with. So for me, it's gonna be lead qualification. Next up, we're gonna select the model that we want to use. You'll have the ability to select small, medium, large, we'll go medium, and then the prompt. Prompting done correctly is so important because it's not just about giving your AI agent something to say, it's about telling it how to think, the right tone, right priorities, and a clear understanding of what done right actually means. Think of it like a job description for your employee. We will discuss the different models you can select through Make at the end of the video when we discuss pricing, so stick around for that. But you'll want to provide your AI agent the system prompt. Now, I've already prepared an AI agent prompt specifically for a lead qualification agent here, so if you want to grab that, leave a comment below and then I'll send it over to you. I'm just going to grab this and jump back into Make, add it to the system prompt, and I'll just click save. And this is gonna open up a new window where we can add some other configuration to our AI agent. So below the system prompt, we've also got context, MCP, and tools. Each of these fields are as important as the prompt. Now the context, that gives your agent the background, what your business is, what your goals are. In this example, what lead you want to acquire. Then we've got the MCP, which is optional. It refers to those who are trying to coordinate multiple agents and the tools. Well, this is what your agent can do. It can send an email via Gmail. It can send a message via Slack. So let's jump back in and look at how we can configure these. So I've uploaded a lead qualification agent context file that ChatGPT helped me create. MCP, I'm gonna leave that as is. And tools, well, we need to actually begin creating scenarios and using our AI agents in our workflows. So here we can see we've got the testing and training. Now you will need to know that you are using Makes AI, therefore you will be using Makes AI credits or tokens. Again, we'll talk about pricing later on, but it's here that you'll want to test and improve your prompt and your context to ensure that you are getting the best response. For example, if I was going to input some lead data, I want to ensure that what the AI agent returns to me is what I expect it to do automatically with my real leads. But we're going to save this and jump into a scenario. Now, if you aren't familiar, but I'm sure that you are, a scenario is an automated workflow in Make. There will be a trigger event, something that kicks off this automated workflow. And that could be a form submission or perhaps a webhook. Now, I'm just gonna use a webhook for the sake of this video, just a custom webhook. I'll copy the address. I'm just gonna save that. I'm gonna add the next module, which you guessed it is going to be our AI agent. Now we'll see the options we have, run an agent, get agent context, delete all agent. I'm just gonna run an agent, which is again, gonna use my tokens or credits. And it will ask us to select our agent. I currently only have the lead qualification agent, so I'll select that. Now there will be plenty of instances when you use multiple AI agents in your workflows. For instance, you may have the lead qualification agent and then a copy agent that actually creates an email to send to that qualified lead later on. But basically we'll have a webhook which is gonna bring in data from a form submission and we want our lead qualification agent to qualify that lead. Now, in order for you to properly test your scenario automated workflow, you wanna use data. So I've just got a webhook, you could use a form, you could use Airtable, any tool 
You just need a place that actually initiates that trigger event and sends data to make. So I'm going to run this and then I'm just going to send a payload. And here we can see that it's successfully run. If we jump in there, we'll see that we've got the lead, John Doe, just his name, the budget, location, and services required. And then we'll be able to tap into Makes AI Agents in order to determine if this is a quality lead. So we're going to open up Make AI Agents. We know that we've already selected the lead qualification agent, but we also have the ability to select other tools that Makes AI Agents can then use to do its job. For instance, it may want to take a look at a particular database that we have within SmartSuite. Well, we can enable to connect to another module or another scenario and get that done. Beyond that, we've got that context. We already discussed this. We've got the thread ID, which will enable you to keep conversation history too far and between chaos and losing your particular threads. And then we've got the message. So this is where we're able to bring in the context of our data. So we're going to select to map, and then we're going to bring in the data or the form submission that we've just grabbed. So I just pulled that in quickly, but I'm just gonna click save. And then from there, we're going to add the next step, which is going to be a router. I've gone ahead and added a router. Each has a particular filter that defines when that particular path is taken. The Make AI agent will qualify the lead depending on the data that we receive. And then it will either send them down a path depending on if it's qualified to the top, needs review, that will go to then one of our sales agents to check out or unqualified, put them in the backlog. But hey, would you even need an AI agent for such a workflow? Well, if your lead qualification is structurally rule based, say below 5K, unqualified, above 5K, qualified, then there's definitely no need. But you could still lean on make.com's AI agents to draft a response to that lead using their data to personalize the message and prepare a quote. For our example, it would work when the lead info is messy. For instance, the service isn't a drop down or a multiple choice question, or perhaps they come at us with a message like, we need help with automation and AI. We can lean on our Make AI agent to define whether this is actually going to be a qualified lead for us. And here we can use make.com's AI agents to help us declutter our inbox. Let's say for instance, that we receive a whole heap of emails. Some refer to our content partnership project and some refer to our daily work, but we don't actually handle that content partnership anymore. And we want to forward those emails automatically to another member of our team. Well, that's where AI agents would come in. So I'll just select again to run an agent. And from there, we're going to select the correlating agent, which for this example, I just called it the customer service agent. Then again, what we want to do is to bring in the context from our emails and the data there. So we can see here, we received an email from make coincidence. And I just want to bring in the full text body there. From there, you could use your customer service AI agent to draft a response or just determine which of those should be passed on to your other team member. Now, when it comes to the pricing and those models that we were able to choose from earlier, you will want to be considerate. Make.com offers credits with each pricing tier. And if we scroll down and look for AI agents, we'll just quickly need to find it. There we go. We can see that that is included on all plans. However, the number of credits used depends on the model you're choosing. While you previously were able to bring in other LL models, currently you can only rely on OpenAI through Makes AI agents. You also have the ability to set the max output tokens, the steps per agent call, and maximum number of agent runs in a thread history. And as far as we understand, you're going to be charged on credits depending on which of those models you choose. One to three credits for the small, three to six for the medium, and six and above for the large. But again, there's still some vagueness on how much it's actually going to cost. So be wary when you do implement make.com's AI agents in your automated workflows. Now, three quick tips for when you will see your make AI agents fail. Number one will be bad prompting and bad context. Again, it's so important that you ensure you're providing the most context, information, and background to your AI agent. Number two is going to be tool confusion. If you do decide to update the tools module scenario section, ensure you know what you are doing. I'll leave some helpful information in the description of this video to help out further. And number three is going to be messy and weak data. If you are inputting chaotic data to your AI agent, don't expect it to continually succeed in giving you what you want. 
If your team and your business is looking to automate your workflows, then do not hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com, where our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation, so book yours today.